How did these soldiers manage to destroy a record number of enemy vehicles in a single battle? Why does President Zelensky wear their chevron? And how did they prevent the capture of Kiev? This is the story of the 72nd Separate Mechanized Brigade named after the Black Zaporizhians. In February 2023, the town of Vuhledar in eastern Ukraine became the backdrop for the largest tank battle of the ongoing war. The Russian forces unleashed a formidable tank assault. However, the Ukrainian soldiers were prepared for the onslaught. They mined fields, aimed their artillery at the single road, and deployed fighters equipped with ATGMs in the surrounding forests. The New York Times reported astonishing statistics, revealing that Russia lost at least 130 tanks and armored personnel carriers in the three-week battle. This gave Putin a reason to say gleefully, the Marines are working at their best, fighting heroically. In response, the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense trolled the invader with video evidence to the contrary, stating, so true. This is just one of the many victories accomplished by the 72nd Brigade. The plans were foiled right from the start, and the rapid landing attempt failed. It faced a delay of half a day, allowing the armed forces of Ukraine to arrive and use artillery to make any landing impossible, even in theory. Our defenders successfully damaged the runway, rendering it unsuitable for landing enemy's heavy transport aircraft, thus preventing any landings from taking place. But what if they had succeeded in landing? I'm sorry, but Kyiv would have been captured. The 72nd Brigade, stationed just outside Kyiv, played a pivotal role in this. Its fighters countered the enemy in the most significant moments of the Battle of Kyiv. Together with artillery units from other formations, they successfully destroyed the runway in Hostomel, thwarting the enemy's attempted landing. Additionally, they defended the crucial village of Moshchun, situated on the way to the Ukrainian capital. They had already prepared for crossing, but they could not go further, as they were uncertain how many people would be left behind. There were thousands of Russians here. But in Moshun, 100 people come here and 50 are taken out. 50 retreat. The Russian forces found themselves trapped here for nearly a month and eventually had to retreat not only from Moshchun, but also from the entire northern part of Ukraine. In their defense efforts, the Ukrainians utilized the remnants of old fortifications from World War II. Oleksandr Vdovichenko's grandfather had fought in these back then. Now it is his grandson who has to defend Kyiv yet again. There were definitely both Ukrainians and Russians in this bunker, united against fascism and Nazism. And now we find ourselves at war with our, as they used to say, older brother. They are not older, they are simply sordid. A horde. Evil. The 72nd Brigade has been actively engaged in combat since 2014, when Russia started a hybrid war against Ukraine. They distinguish themselves as among the first cyborgs, the renowned defenders of Donetsk airport, and played a significant role in the liberation of Mariupol. After 2014, the brigade held positions in the most intense areas of the hybrid war, specifically near Volnovakha and Avdiivka. During their rotations, they were consistently hailed as heroes. In fact, the 72nd Brigade's history predates the events of 2014. The brigade's name, the Black Zaporizhians, dates back to the cavalry forces of the Ukrainian People's Republic, a state that existed in the early 20th century, but succumbed to the previous Russian invasion. A century ago, the Black Zaporizhians fought against invaders on the very same fields where present-day battles unfold – near Kyiv, Kharkiv, Mariupol and Crimea. The modern Black Zaporizhians proudly continue the legacy of their predecessors. Their chevron, inscribed with Ukraine or death, is also worn by President Zelensky, who received it from the 72nd Brigade in 2019. The brigade is famous for its skill in using drones. Using civilian drones and small ammunition, they destroyed entire grad systems or demonstrated impeccable precision. The brigade also utilizes unique German DM-22 mines, which they strategically place along roads to target passing vehicles, 
These mines, armed with tandem charges, were responsible for the destruction of a significant number of Russian tanks in the Battle of Vohledar. One of the most notable battles of the 72nd Brigades was an ambush on Russia's 90th Tank Division in March 2022 near Kyiv. Intercepted communications revealed that the invaders lost nearly an entire regiment and its commander, Colonel Andrei Zakharov, was killed. In the autumn of 2022, they fought near Pavlivka in eastern Ukraine. The village came under attack by approximately 600 enemy marines from the 155th Brigade, supported by 30 armored vehicles. The severity of the situation in Pavlivka was acknowledged even by the UK Ministry of Defense. However, the Russian elite troops soon released an open letter revealing that within a few days around 300 of their soldiers had been killed, wounded or captured, and half of their armored vehicles had been destroyed. Around the same time, Rustam Muradov, the officer in charge of these Russian attacks, was promoted to the rank of Colonel General. The 72nd Brigade remains steadfast in its fight against the enemy. The goal is to liberate the entire Ukraine. I can only say one thing to our so-called friends from the other side. Do you want this land? We will mix you with it.